Advice number four, realize that greatness of time and place and worship have all come together in this season. Look, when Allah takes an oath upon something, realize that Allah the Great is drawing your attention to something great. Look at the oaths. Allah said, Wal Fajr by dawn, Walayalin Ashr and by the ten nights, Was Shaf'i Wal Watr and by the even and by the odd. Three oaths. By dawn, we know what that means. And then by the ten nights, according to the majority of scholars, they are in reference to the very first ten days of the month of Dhul Hijjah, where the rites of Hajj take place. And then he said, was Shafi by the even. Some have said this is in reference to the 10th day of Dhul Hijjah, Yawm al Nahr. And then when he said, by the odd, that's in reference to the 9th day of Dhul Hijjah, that's the day of Arafah. So Allah takes a general oath on the first 10 days, then two specific oaths on two specific days within those 10 to capture your attention, the 9th and the 10th. And that is why the Prophet وسلم, said, Ma min ayyamin. There are no days in the year wherein Allah loves the doing of good deeds more than these days. Allahu Akbar, these first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. The greatness of time has come. And the Prophet said, there are no days in the year, he said, wherein Allah frees more people from the hellfire than the day of Arafah, the ninth day of the Hijjah. He said, on that day, Allah draws near and praises them to the angels. And he says, what do they want? What have they come here for? Allahu Akbar. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, خَيْرُ الدُّعَاءِ دُعَاءُ يَوْمِ عَرَفَةً The greatest dua you can make is the dua on the day of Arafah. Imam ibn al-Qayyim and others have actually argued that the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are greater than the last 10 days of Ramadan, whilst the last 10 nights of Ramadan are greater than the first 10 nights of Dhul Hijjah. But you know, even if one was to argue that these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are in fact greater than the last 10 days and nights of Ramadan, with the exception to Laylatul Qadr, that opinion wouldn't be strange or erroneous. Because Allah took an oath on the nights of the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Allahu Akbar. So, uh, despite all of this, you find that these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, they're so undervalued by people. When compared to the last 10 nights of Ramadan, why is this? The greatness of time has come. But not just the greatness of time, it's also the greatness of worship, Hajj. The Prophet said to his wife Aisha, he said, Lakunna afdalul jihadi hajjun mabrur. For you, meaning women, the greatest jihad is an accepted Hajj. The greatest jihad for you, a woman is an accepted Hajj. Allahu Akbar, what status therefore is, belongs to Hajj? And it's for these reasons that those who'd realize this would race to fulfill their Hajj time and time again. Even though the circumstances of travel back then were so much harsher than ours today. Traveled by foot or on animal in a state of exposure to the sun and other harm. I mean, think about Makki, Ibn Ibrahim al hanbali who performed Hajj 50 times or Ja'far al-Khawas who performed Hajj 60 times, or uh, Bukair ibn Atiq who performed Hajj 60 times, or Ali ibn al-Muwaffaq who performed Hajj a staggering 70 times, or uh, Ata, the Mufti of Mecca who performed Hajj 70 times, or Abu Abdullah al-Maqarri who performed Hajj 97 times. SubhanAllah. And as for those who have performed Hajj around the 40 time mark, only Allah knows of their number. SubhanAllah. That's because they realize that the greatness of time and the greatness of place and the greatness of worship, Hajj, they've all come together. So they couldn't miss this treasure trove of an opportunity. Allahu Akbar. Bishr ibn Muhammad, he said that during my tawaf, circumambulation around the Kaaba, I came across an old man 
who was clearly fatigued and leaning on a stick and he was doing tawaf around the Kaaba, I said to him, which country, uncle, have you come from? And he said, from Khurasan, from Greater Persia. And then the old man asked me, how long does it take you to get here? I said, two to three months. He said, then you should be doing Hajj every year. So I said to him, how long does it take you to get here? He said, five years. He said, I left my country for Mecca without a single gray hair in my beard and in my head. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar. And Ibn Abi Shayba, a scholar of hadith, has given a chapter within his work, Al Musannaf. What was the title of the chapter? He said, Man kana yastahibu idha dakhala rajulu Mecca an la yakhruja hatta yakra al Quran. He titles the chapter with this The narrations of those who encouraged the visitors of Mecca to complete the recitation of the whole Qur'an before they leave. He mentions many people who were of this opinion. In other words, I'm trying to show you how they wanted to scoop hasanat during this time. So as a pilgrim, the point of mentioning this, avoid, of, avoid complaining oh, that we've arrived too early or any other complaint. At this moment in time and place, you could not be doing anything greater and more rewarding than what you are doing. So relish the experience and realize that the greatness of time and place and worship have all come together. Say Alhamdulillah.